Thomas Gage, born in 1719 to a wealthy family in England. By nine years old, he was attending one of the wealthiest and most prestigious schools in England known as Westminster with his brother. While attending school at Westminster, he ran into future officers John Burgoyne and Richard Howe, whom he would collaborate with later in the wars in North America. Thomas Gage, by 1741, began his first ensign in the British Army. Over the years, he moved up the ranks very quickly, due in part to his uh, brother with political connections, as well as having a very wealthy family. Thomas Gage finally saw some action in 1745 at the Battle of, however you pronounce that, there, he was working in a battle that had largely to do with the Austrian secession, which was mostly a battle between the Dutch and the British. Thomas Gage, time and time again, proved his skill in battle, and between the years 1747 and 1748, he participated in many campaigns and was eventually promoted to major. Thomas Gage was soon transferred to the 55th Regiment, so by 1751, he became a lieutenant colonel one of the highest ranks you could ever achieve in the British Army. Three years later, in 1754, he sent over to North America for the French and Indian War. In 1754, Thomas Gage sailed back to America to join the 44th Regiment. Thomas Gage was presented at Braddock's defeat at Fort Duchesne, where he was wounded. Thomas Gage then spent his winter quarters in Albany and New York City. Thomas Gage was second in command in the expedition of the Mohawk River. Thomas Gage was then sent to Halifax, Nova Scotia, and then he was presented with the job to make the 80th Regiment. On July 8, 1758, Thomas Gage was wounded at Fort Ticonderoga. In January 1759, Thomas Gage is given command of Albany and its neighboring posts. On September 6, 1760, Thomas Gage becomes governor of military for Montreal and surrounding areas. In 1761, Thomas Gage is promoted to Major General. In 1762, Thomas Gage is given command of the 22nd Regiment. November 16, 1763, Thomas Gage arrives in New York City and takes duties as Commander-in-Chief of America. In November of 1764, Gage succeeded Amherst. Gage then had to deal with the fallouts from the actions of Parliament in London. Because of the Stamp Act, Gage had to take troops from rural posts and bring them into the cities, especially New York City. After the Townsend Act, people rebelled and Boston became the seat of the rebellion. Gage then sent troops to Boston in response to the rebellions. After a while, there are too many troops there in Boston due to the British government sending troops there as well. The Quartering Act was then passed in 1765 to provide housing for the troops. On March 5, 1770, the situation boiled over and the Boston Massacre occurred. In 1772, Gage requested to go back to England since he hasn't been back in 17 years. In 1773, Gage and his family sailed back to England. While Gage was in England, the Boston Port Bill was passed. This bill closed Boston Harbor until they could fix what happened at the Boston Tea Party. After this happened, they then found it necessary for Gage to return from England. In 1774, Thomas Gage was appointed the military governor of Massachusetts, where he was to enforce the Intolerable Acts, which were a reaction to the Boston Tea Party. Britain thought he would be best for the job because he was moderate to both sides of the story. He was very welcomed by the Bostonians as they were excited to see Hutchison go, who was the former governor. He slowly lost his popularity as he implemented the Boston Port Act, which caused a total loss of jobs. Um, groups such as the Sons of Liberty would then come up and arise and cause him major issues. He tried to keep a strong military presence to keep these groups under control, but he was still largely criticized by the British government for even letting them still exist. After Lexington and Concord, he tried to gain popularity again with both sides. He gave pardon to anybody that sided with the royal crown. With more population on the royal side, it gave them the opportunity to have the colonists give up Reed's Hill and gave a very tough victory for them in Bunker's Hill. After the Battle of Bunker Hill, he petitioned to go back to Britain, where he was granted it and he was replaced by William Howe. He returned to Portland Place in London. He continued to support the war effort, but he generally kept to himself as he died on April 2nd, 1787. 
Gage's wife outlived him almost 40 years, and his son Henry inherited all of his wealth and became one of the wealthiest men in England. His legacy never truly dies, though. In 1792, Lieutenant Governor Simcoe named an island off the mouth of St. Lawrence after Gage.